Random forest algorithm is another popular machine learning technique used in regression and classification both. Now why is it called random forest? Well the forest has trees and a tree in machine learning world means a decision tree. Now if you haven't seen my decision tree tutorial then you should click on that pause button right now. Go watch decision tree tutorial and then come back here. Assuming you have watched this, what we try to do in that tutorial is predict employee salary based on certain features and we build a decision tree like this. Now this decision tree looks very complicated so can you represent it in a very simple image? Well yeah there you have it. You have green samples, red samples and based on that you build your decision tree. Now how can you build uh, multiple decision trees out of this single data set? Well, one approach is you take your data set, then you divide it into batch of random data sets. Then you build decision tree for each of them. So since we did random sampling here, it's called random forest. And now we have multiple trees. So you see a forest being formed already. Once it is trained, you give the thing that you want to predict and they will all come up with different decision. You just may take a majority vote out of it and get a decision. So this is the basic crux behind the random forest algorithm. And I recently used similar approach to make a decision in my real life. I wanted to buy Nest thermostat and I called a bunch of my friends. And yeah, by the way, that's me in the picture. And those smart dudes gave me different opinions. One guy told me, you know, it's going to save you so much money. I saved like $500 last year, so you should buy it. The other friend say, oh, it's freaking $200. It's a waste of money. Don't buy it. Third guy told me, oh, you can control your temperature remotely anywhere from outside. So definitely buy it. All I did is just took a majority watt and decided to buy it. See, making decisions is so simple in life. Just call your friends and take a majority war. All right, it doesn't work all the time, but at least in this case it worked and I had a decision and I'm not making this up. I just installed it yesterday. All right, now we're going to use sklearns digits dataset to uh, make a classification uh, using random forest. So that dataset basically contains the images of handwritten characters. And all you're trying to do is just classify into one of these 10 categories where there is a digit from 0 to 10. All right, so that's what we will do in our uh, Python coding today. And in the end, we will have an interesting exercise for you to solve. As usual, I have launched my Jupyter Notebook and loaded the digits dataset from sklearn datasets. All right, and if I look at the properties of this dataset, it has the real data and the target All right now I'm going to use matplotlib to uh, visualize my data and when I run this it looks like this so I have basically handwritten characters which is like 8 by 8 pixel array it's like a multi-dimensional array and when I use matplotlib it looks like this you can see this is character 0 1 2 3 and so on okay now I will create a pandas data frame uh, from this data set. So digits data, basically data is, if, if you see, if you want to see it, just to make it simple, um, you will see that it is a two dimensional array of numbers. So let's look at first five. See first five, like each element is just a two dimensional it's it's actually one dimensional array but it's like eight by eight matrix so the length of this array is 64 okay and you can uh, visualize this in a better way if you are using data frame each sample is nothing but an array of 64 integers and they map to the target variable so if you do digits dot target it is uh, showing the target variable and I'm going to append that into my data frame. 
this is how you create a new column in pandas data frame this is nothing but digits dot target and when i look at my df dot head it says that this 64 uh, samples they map to zero all right so for example this picture here is actually zero so this target is showing you the truth all right now what i'm going to do is use train test split so i will do from sklearn dot model selection import train test split once you import that you need x train x taste y train y taste okay and train taste split now my x is just a set of independent variables now my df already has target so i need to drop target from that okay so i'm going to drop target and x is his columns and my y age is digits dot target and you need to specify how you want to split your training and test data when i say test size equal to 0 0.2 it means 20 percent of my sample is test data and 80 percent are training okay when i run this it created all these four variables and when you look at size of your x train it is 1437 whereas x taste is this so this means uh, 20 percent of your total samples so now i have a uh, nice uh, training and test samples i can use now the random forest classifier uh, to train my model all right so from sklearn dot ensemble now why is it called ensemble ensemble is a term used when you are using multiple algorithms to predict the outcome all right that's what we, we are doing to, uh, here we are building multiple decision trees and uh, taking a majority word to come up with our final outcome so that's why it's called ensemble from that import random forest classifier okay and then just call model.fit this is your training step after this step your model will be trained and it trained the model and you can see a bunch of parameters here so the Gini and entropy criteria is something that you studied in the decision tree uh, tutorial already so that's what this is you also have estimators so here 10 means it used 10 random trees okay and we are going to see the performance using the 10 random trees so let's call model.score on x taste and y taste and we can see that uh, the accuracy is 91 percent okay when we use 10 random trees the accuracy was 91 percent now let me try to tune this model and by and by giving 20 random trees so i train it using 20 trees you can see my score is increasing all right i had more trees and my score increase if i do 30 wow it's even better okay so looks like now it's not changing much all right so 40 or 50 trees uh, you can get a base score so you can uh, fine tune your model by tweaking this parameter it also depends on your uh, samples as well so if i execute this line once again then now my training uh, set has changed and it might give me a different result so you see it, it performed even better now your model is trained and you can give any sample input which is nothing but this kind of handwritten character image and it will tell you what number that is all right uh, now i'm going to plot a confusion matrix 
to uh, kind of see the distribution of errors and where my model perform well versus where it performed poorly. And for that, I need X predicted. So here I can use model.predict on my X test data set and I get Y predicted. This is predicted by model. This is the truth, okay? And confusion matrix allows you to plot truth on one axis and the prediction on the other axis. From sklearn.matrix import confusion matrix. And I'm just going to call it CM. Here, uh, you first supply your truth and then you supply your prediction and when you plot this is gonna plot two dimensional array all right mm -hmm. now this is probably not a better way to visualize it so i'm going to use a seaborn visualization library and i'm just going to copy paste code just to save some typing so it's the same confusion matrix but it's visually more pleasing okay so here you have your truth data, you have your prediction. And what this means is I had 46 zero and 46 time it predicted them to be zero. So for zero, it perf it performed like really well. Now what does, what does this two means? This two means I had two times the truth was eight, but my model predicted it to be one. So this is where it made an error. 30 times the truth was eight and it predicted uh, it to be eight, right? So this, this is a nice visualization which allows you to gauge the performance of a model and you should use it uh, more often. All right, now the most interesting part, which is an exercise. We are going to use our famous iris dataset from sklearn.dataset to predict the iris species. Uh, and for that we'll use a random forest classifier. So I want you to train your model using the default uh, and estimated parameters and then try to tweak it and tell me what base score you can achieve by using how many trees. All right, you should uh, do this exercise. If you are not going to do this exercise then you're going to make me very, very angry, all right? So just be afraid of me and just do it.